Amen. That's a fun song. Love that one. All right. Riley, if we could just duplicate you and you go, you're going to Awana in a couple of weeks to work and uh, we're going to miss that flute. That's for sure. So anyway, uh, Joe Marcone, he's a good friend. Um, this church started with six people in my living room, Joe and Peg Marcone, myself, Amy, and Jack and Jane Rodden. And that was the first prayer meeting of uh, what we were to do, how we were to do it. It wasn't an actual church service, but that's, that's, those are the, we were the first six people to show interest. And uh, when we started, and Joe was literally my right-hand man, and uh, Peg would do anything and everything that needed to be done, the buildings and the nurseries, um, whatever, in the kitchen. And Joe was the song leader. And we said, Joe, I'm not, I said, Joe, I can't lead songs, so that leaves you. And uh, he, of course, has some musical background, and he did an excellent job as our song leader. And uh, he was our uh, Bible study teacher for all of the uh, adult Sunday schools that we had. He had he handled that single-handedly, and Joe, it's taken four men to do what you've done. They rotate, so. <laughs> and uh, he loves the Word of God. He's a great teacher and preacher. But we would not be in the shape that we're in today if we didn't have these foundations. And I, I love when the Marcones come back and visit, and I love that they're here for the 10-year anniversary. And they've done so much and have such an investment. And if I can't even tell you, the investment that they have here to get us off the ground and praise the Lord for that. So, Joe, thank you, and Peg, thank you for all you've done. And uh, we want to hear from you, brother. You're, you, this man is a lover of the Word of God like I've ever seen in anyone. So, praise God. So, Joe, welcome, Joe, to the pulpit tonight. All right. Well, greetings from... Where do we live? Mesa, Arizona, where we have had 31 straight days of highs over 110 degrees. You say, is it hot? Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. But we, uh, we enjoy it there. We are at Canyon Springs Baptist Church. We've been there since uh, February of 2019, and uh, we uh, believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. And we have taught our people so, and I uh, had the privilege uh, several, I think about a year and a half ago, to convince our pastor to have us teach where the Bible came from. So we did that for a number of weeks, and uh, for the last nine months, we have just finished going through Romans verse by verse, and then they wanted a little prophecy, so we are currently in the book of Daniel in Sunday school, and we're teaching that. We've just finished chapter two, and when we get back, we'll begin into chapter uh, 3. I wonder tonight if you realize where you're sitting. I wonder tonight if you realize, you really realize where you're sitting. You have come out from the world and you have separated yourself as the scriptures teach to fellowship one with another, brothers and sisters in Christ. You have publicly told the world that you're not part of it. You are in it, but you are not part of it. And you have separated yourself and come out as the body of Christ to hear the word of God preached and taught. You do that on a Thursday night. Notice I didn't say Wednesday. I said Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Back in Mesa, we have our midweek service on Wednesday. You have it here on Thursday. But you have separated yourself and come out and made yourself separate as the scripture teaches. So I commend you for that. The uh, validation for tonight's message occurred Tuesday night. I spoke this to pastor on Tuesday night. And what I saw Tuesday night is the topic of our message tonight. So let's uh, take our document. What'd you say? Let's take our document and turn to Psalm 89. Psalm 89. I've never heard the Holy Bible referred to as a document. Well, it is. It is the most, are you listening? It is the most attested to document on planet Earth. 
There is no, uh, are you listening? There is no other document that is of ancient time that is more attested to than the book that you have on your lap. The only thing that comes close to it, and it's not even close, is Homer's Iliad, which has about 600 surviving copies, primarily from the 10th to 15th century, around there. But your Bible has documentation back to the middle of the 1st and 2nd century. In fact, this is not part of my message, there's 24,000, did you hear what I said? There's 24,000 pieces of evidence to support the book that's in your lap tonight. That should tell you something. That should tell you something. The topic of my message tonight is faithfulness. Faithfulness. Look at Psalm 89, verse 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Verse 2. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. Look down at verse 5. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Look at verse 8. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Look at verse 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. And lastly, verse 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. So as you can see, our topic tonight from those verses is faithfulness faithfulness. And I'm going to ask that of you tonight. Where is your faithfulness? So it's an important topic. As our days grow darker and more evil and sin continues to reveal itself in our world, Paul called it this present evil world in Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, we who are born again Bible-believing Christians have a dire need to stand up and be faithful, faithful, to be faithful. This characteristic of the Christian life is unfortunately sadly lacking in our Bible-believing churches today, many of them. So our opening text here has six specific references to God's faithfulness. Now the psalm, we won't get into the actual doctrine of it, but the psalm is obviously a messianic psalm. It is a psalm about Christ. That word mass kill, and if some of you don't have this in your Bible, how many of you have right under Psalm 89, mass kill of Ethan the Ezraite? How many of you got that? Oh, you got that. Okay, good. Now that's not part of the scripture, but that's something that was added by past generations about that particular psalm. So what we've got going is mass kill means meditation or instruction. So when it says there, mass kill of Ethan the Ezraite, what it's saying is you ought to take what Ezra said there, Ethan said there, and meditate on it and receive instruction from it. That's what that means in your, uh, in your Bible. So that's what mass kill means. At other times in the scriptures, Jesus Christ will be referred to, and at other times, God the Father will be the speaker in Psalm. It's a rather lengthy Psalm, as you can see, uh, 52 verses. So I just want to go through briefly to begin those uh, six verses. Verse 1, God's faithfulness is recorded there to all generations. I think you would agree with me when, you, when, we, when we say that God is faithful, amen? I didn't hear you, amen? Yeah, God is faithful. God will never leave you or forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 talks about that. God will never leave you or forsake you. Take your Bible and go over to Matthew 24 for a minute. Matthew 24. Now, if you know me, we're going to jump around here in the Scriptures because the Scriptures are going to speak and not me. Look at Matthew 24. Jesus speaking. 
Verse 1 of Psalm 89 says that God is faithful to all generations. Look at Matthew 24 and pick it up at verse 34. Jesus says this, speaking of the end times, speaking of the tribulation and the people that will be alive in the tribulation. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. The generation that sees the material that he's given here in chapter 24, the generation that sees that will not pass till all of that material is fulfilled. So God's faithfulness to all generations. In this passage in chapter 24, God is going to be faithful and is faithful to Israel. Whatever he has said back in the Old Testament regarding Israel, he will fulfill. He will fulfill that. In verse 2 of Psalm 89, it says that God's faithfulness is to the very heavens. So we'll come back to Isaiah 66. God's faithfulness is to the very heavens. He will be faithful to his creation. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. And look at verse 22, the end of the chapter. Psalm 66, 22. The Lord says this, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. So God's faithfulness to the very heavens. Look at Psalm 19. Come back to the book of Psalms and look at Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Psalm 19 says, verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words, did you see that? W-O-R-D-S. That passage is saying that day and night talk to you. Don't tell me that the heathen don't know that there's a God. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and day and night talk to you. You watch that sunrise in the morning, you watch that sunset at night, and God is saying, I'm here, I'm here, try and find me. If you seek me, you'll be, I'll, I'll be found of you. That's what it's saying there. Verse 5, or verse 4, their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world, and them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Back in Psalm 89 at verse 5, God's faithfulness to the congregation of saints. Come up to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. I hope you have nimble fingers tonight. 1 Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4. God's faithfulness to the congregation of saints. People, listen. When the Bible says something, you can take it to the bank. It, you can take it to the bank. It will be fulfilled. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. You know this passage. But I would not have you to be ignorant, Paul says, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that are dead in Christ, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, those that are dead, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, those that are dead in Christ. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Why did he say that? Verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The Lord has said that one of these days, one of these nights, he's going to break the sky and come and get us. Amen? Amen? You can take that to the bank. That's going to happen. You say, well, it hasn't happened yet. I've been waiting 50 years for it to happen. I'm 50 years as a Christian. I've been waiting 50 years. It hasn't happened yet. But it will. It will happen. Why? Because God said so. Listen, listen. I'm betting my soul on that book. What are you betting on? I'm betting my soul that that book's right. You say, what if it isn't right? You die. Randy and I were talking a little bit earlier about Randy, Randy's uh, cancer diagnosis and so forth. Well, okay. I'm just going to change locations. Amen, brother? 
If something happens to me, to him, to you, you're gonna, if you're saved, you're going to change locations. By the way, by the way, if you're not saved, you're going to change locations. Amen? There's a place called heaven. There's a place called hell. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come back to Psalms. Come back to Psalms. Uh, at verse uh, 4, uh, I'm sorry, at verse 8, God's faithfulness is round about him like no other. Look at Psalm 34. Psalm 34. I'm just building up to something here. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. God's faithfulness is round about him like no other. Psalm 34, look at verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Don't ever feel that God's abandoned you. That's a false claim. God has not abandoned you. You say, well, I'm out of the will of God. He, he's, you're out of fellowship, but he hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't ab you say, well, how do I get back in fellowship? Confess your sin and get back in fellowship. Right? That's what you do. That's what you do. So God's faithfulness is round about him like no other. At verse 24 of Psalm 89, God's faithfulness is with us. Don't turn there. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So God's faithfulness is with us. And in verse 33 of Psalm 89, God's faithfulness will not fail. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24 says, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Who also will do it. How many of you have had someone that has told you something and that, and that someone has failed you? Come on, raise your hand. Yeah, okay, all right, yeah. That doesn't happen with God. That doesn't happen with God. So those, those six things are going on in Psalm 89. Here's the definition of faithfulness from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Webster says this, faithfulness is fidelity, loyalty, a firm adherence to allegiance and duty. I saw that Tuesday night here. Faithful and allegiance, uh, adherence to allegiance and duty. I don't know how many people stood up. 80, how many do we have? 85? 82 that were faithful in their Sunday school attendance and their Sunday school responsibilities. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians. We're supposed to be faithful. Uh, some other uh, definitions is truth, veracity, as the faithfulness of God. Webster was a saved guy, Noah Webster, and a lot of his uh, 1828 dictionary. If you don't have it, it's online. It's in the public domain. Now, I'm going to briefly go through 13 people here. Relax, relax. It's not going to take long. Uh, there's 13 people that the scripture specifically says were faithful. Gaius, 3 John 5, Gaius faithfully took care of the brethren and strangers. Lydia, Acts 16, she was judged to be faithful by the Lord, uh, by Paul and by Luke. Stewards in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, they're called faithful. Timothy was a faithful individual. Paul was a faithful individual. Abraham was a faithful individual. Tychicus, Ephesians 6, 21, he was a faithful minister, the Bible says. Epaphras was a faithful minister, the Bible says. Onesimus, Colossians 4, 9, he was faithful. Deacon's wives, how many of you, you're a, what, you're a deacon's wife? Raise your hand. You're a deacon's wife, raise your hand. Okay, they're, they're said to be faithful. Uh, Moses was faithful, Hebrews 13, or 3, 2. Silvanus, Silvanus was, uh, Silas was faithful. Antipas was a faithful martyr, like Stephen was in Acts chapter 7. So there's a lot of uh, material, a lot of men and women that are called faithful in the scripture. So as we're going through this stuff, categorize yourself. Are you faithful? Who are the faithful? The faithful are a minority. I think the thing is 20% of the people are twenty percent of the people work in the church and eighty percent don't something like that. The faithful are a minority. Come back if you're still in Psalm eighty nine. Look at Psalm twelve. Psalm twelve. Psalm twelve. Faithfulness, sadly lacking today. Psalm twelve, verse one. Help, Lord, for the godly man seetheth; the faithful fail from among the children of men. They're in a minority. Look at Proverbs chapter 20. Go to the next book. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Look at verse 6. Proverbs 20, 
20, verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. That's true. But a faithful man, who can find? They're in the minority. Where are you? Are you in the minority or the majority? Are you faithful? Are you faithful? They're in the minority. The faithful, secondly, the faithful conceal a matter. Come back to Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. The faithful conceal a matter. I'm sure every one of you here can think of an instance where you, in confidence, said something to a friend, and that friend broke your confidence, amen? But a faithful person doesn't do that. Look at Proverbs 11, verse 13. Proverbs 11, 13. A tale bearer reveals secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. He that is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. The faithful are in the minority. The faithful conceal a matter. The faithful, look at Proverbs 14, the faithful don't lie. The faithful do not lie. Proverbs 14, verse 5, a faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Where are you? Categorize yourself. The faithful are a minority. The faithful conceal a matter. The faithful don't lie. And the faithful have lots of blessing. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Look at verse 20. Proverbs 28, 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessing, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. The faithful have many blessings. They sure do. All right. What are the characteristics of faithfulness? What are the char- I'm going to give you six characteristics. It won't take long. The first, if you're taking notes, the first characteristic of a faithful individual is commitment. Commitment. Daniel, in the book of Daniel, was a man that was committed to the Lord and would not waver in his convictions. In Daniel chapter 1, which we have recently studied back in Canyon Springs, back in Mesa, In Daniel chapter 1, he would not defile himself with Nebuchadnezzar's dietary plan. He wanted his Israeli Israeli dietary plan. And as a result of that, at the end of 10 days, he looked healthier than all of the other individuals that were on Nebuchadnezzar's diet plan. He stood by his convictions. In Daniel chapter 6, look at Daniel. Look at Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, he again shows that he was a man of convictions. He was faithful. He was faithful. Daniel chapter 6. Look at verse 4. Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find, but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was, there it is, faithful neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, his enemies, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Daniel was a faithful individual. He had his moments, but he was a faithful individual. David was a man of commitment in seeking to build the house of the Lord, 2 Samuel chapter 7. Commitment speaks of dedication to the Lord, to his kingdom, and to his will. Now, time would fail me today, and I've got, a, I've got a bunch of illustrations. Time would fail me today to speak of the men and women, listen, who were committed to the birth of Faith Bible Church in our early, early days, back in the early days of 2013. Uh, many, many different illustrations of people here every Saturday cleaning and putting new tile down, and uh, remember Brother Doug ripping up all the carpets back in the, in the fellowship room, and uh, just all those different things that we did. People were committed. People were faithful. People were faithful. People were faithful. Uh, so time would fail to tell me of all those men and women who were committed to the birth of Faith Bible Church. That time, listen, listen, that time for my wife and I, I I've said this before, That time for my wife and I was the greatest experience of our Christian lives. 
It didn't match up with our salvation, but after our salvation, the greatest experience that we had was birthing this church, birthing this church. And then to be able to come back at 10 years and see what's, what God has done. Listen, see that guy over there? See that guy? He couldn't do this. See that guy down there? See Paul Eschner? He couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. But God could. But God could. So all different kinds of illustrations on how we bought this church and all of that. Uh, you'll probably see some of that in the videos this Sunday morning. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you have a commitment to this church, like what I just mentioned, that type of a commitment, where you would, this is, this is our life. This is what we do. This is our life. So commitment, number one. Number two, love. Look at 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. You say, is being here better than driving your Corvette? Yes, yes, that's true. Yep. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 14. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ constrains us, persuades us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, that would be the Lord, then we're all dead. Paul says that because of the love of Christ, the love that Christ had for us, we who are in Christ are all dead. Now, you know what Galatians 2.20 says, but we're going to look at it. Look back at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I should say look forward to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, look at verse 20. It's one of my favorite verses. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. By the way, see that first phrase there? I am crucified with Christ. Are you listening? That phrase, I am crucified with Christ, present tense, the Bible that you have in your lap, is the only Bible on the planet that says it that way. All of the other Bibles say, listen, all of the other Bibles say, I have been crucified with Christ, past tense. That's not true. That's not true. The Bible says, Paul says, I die daily, every day. So that's the correct, that's the correct translation. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Something that you ought to consider, those of you that teach Bible and preach Bible, you ought to really consider that verse and, and take that verse apart. I'll just give you a little, little nugget. That verse is saying, listen, that everything Christ went through because you and I are in Christ, you went through. That's all I'll say about that. You think about that. Everything that Christ went through, everything, and you're in Christ as a Christian, you went through it too. I am crucified with Christ. That's all I'll say about that. Paul says that because of the love that Christ had for us, we are in Christ. We're all in Christ. Jesus did not come down off the cross. Amen. He was faithful. He did not come down off the cross. He could have, he could have called 10,000 angels, right? That song. He could have called legions of angels to get him off the cross. He didn't. He stayed there because of the love he had for you and me. Think about that. If he would have come down off of the cross, you know where I go? I go down there. But he didn't. He stayed there. He stayed there. Commitment, love. Thirdly, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Long-suffering. These are the characteristics of an individual that is faithful. Commitment, love. Thirdly, Long suffering, Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six, and look at verse three. Second Corinthians six three. In Second Corinthians chapter six, verse three, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. In much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. All of those different things, all of those different things, Paul put up with all of those different hardships and circumstances in the ministry. Listen, 
10 years of Faith Bible Church, it hasn't all been roses. It hasn't all been roses. There have been some bumps in the road, amen? There's been some bumps in the road. But you stay faithful. You stay faithful to the commitment that you've made to God, to Christ, to first or to Faith Bible Church. I was going to say Canyon Springs. But to Faith Bible Church. Faithful, long-suffering. Put up with it. Listen, you're nobody special, right? You're nobody special. I'm nobody special. We put up with hardships just as Paul did. Fourthly, patience. Same passage. Look at verse 4. But in all things are proving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. So patience. Hebrews 12. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. Another verse. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Look at verse 1. The writer of Hebrews says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of of the throne of God. You see that phrase, who for the joy that was set before him? Christ knew that he had to go through all that pain and suffering and trials and tribulations, but at the end, there would be joy. That's where you and I are going. At the end of our journey, there will be joy. There'll be a bump or two, but there'll be joy. There'll be joy. So patience, have patience. Patience should be a characteristic of those in the ministry. We started Faith Bible Church at the Chinese Church a mile down the road. We rented the upstairs, and we had a couple of rooms. We renovated those rooms, and we uh, used the gym as our sanctuary. Remember those days, putting up the chairs and taking down the chairs, right? Those were sweet days. You say that was kind of tedious. Yeah, but you look, those were sweet days. We had everybody in the line, like the, fire, like the firemen carry, you know? We had everybody in line doing the chairs, setting them up and putting them down. You don't forget something like that. Investment, investment. So we used a lot of patience back then. Much patience was exhibited by the early members of Faith Bible Church as we sought to establish our services and to purchase and renovate the building you are now sitting in. I remember that one morning we all came and we went to the various, we went to the various rooms of the church and read scripture in the various rooms of the church to bless the church with scripture. I remember those days. So commitment, that's a characteristic of faithfulness. Love, long-suffering, patience. Fifthly, endurance. Look at 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, endurance. Characteristics of faithfulness, endurance. Look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, look at verse... uh, Three. Now look at verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me, Paul says, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Look at chapter 4, verse 5. 2 Timothy 4, 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. My example for Number five here, endurance, is that when we came to Arizona, Peg and I, in uh, five years ago this month, August of 2018, we did not retire from the ministry. We spent, from the time we got there till February of 2019, so for quite a number of months, looking for a church. We looked at at least 10 different churches. Some churches, we la- we were there for three or four weeks. Some churches, we actually sat down with the pastor and said, this is who we are, this is what we believe, what do you believe? 
and had some really interesting conversations about what those individuals believe. And we finally settled on Canyon Springs, and we've been there since February of 2019. My wife teaches a ladies' Bible study, and uh, right now has the ear of the pastor's wife, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I have an opportunity to have an impact with our with our pastor, Pastor Andy Wirtz, with, for which I'm very, very grateful. So we did not retire from the ministry. We dove right in when we found the right church. And by God's grace, we'll continue to do that until the Lord comes and gets us. What are you doing? How faithful are you? How faithful are you? Well, number six tonight, after endurance, steadfastness. Steadfastness. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Characteristics of a faithful individual. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, end of the chapter, look at verse 58. Paul concludes this chapter and he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Look at that phrase. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Many years ago, 50 years ago, I went out soul winning with a gentleman from First Bible Baptist Church who was with the Lord now, Landis Lundberg. Some of you remember him, Landis Lundberg. He took me under his wing and we went out soul winning. We went out knocking on doors. We went out visiting. And we came up with a big goose egg. Nobody would talk to us. They closed their doors. We spent probably an hour or so going from houses and going to uh, people that had visited the church. No one wanted to talk to us. And I, that was my first experience. And I was, I was in the dumps. And he quoted me that verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I remember that. I'll never forget that. Steadfastness. Look over at Colossians chapter 2. Go forward. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Pick up Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 5. Colossians 2, 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order, look at it, and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Don't quit. Faithful people, faithful men and women don't quit. You say, well, I'm in the valley. Okay, you get, you'll get out of the valley. You'll be on the mountaintop, you'll be, but you don't quit. You keep going forward. Listen, listen. What else have you got to do? What, what, what's better? What, watching a television program? playing sports? What's better than serving the Lord? What's better than that? Have you got, if you've got something better than that, see me, after the, see me after the service. I'd like to know what it is. You have something tangible, earthly, that'll give you an eternal reward? Did you hear what I said there? Do you have something earthly that will give you an eternal reward? No, you don't. No, you don't. Everything you've got going on here stays here. Stays here. You don't take it with you. It stays here. So, steadfastness. We also call this stick-to-itiveness. Stick-to-itiveness. All right? You don't quit until you're dead. That's when you quit. Okay. Uh, turn over to Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. Almost finished here. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, look at verse 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Don't you want the Lord to say that to you when you get there? Don't you? That's what I want. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I'd like to have him say, Well done, thou good and and faithful servant. Okay, now regarding faithfulness, as we, as we quit here, how do you and I fare in the matter of, I'm going to give you 11 things real quick. You calculate where you are in your faithfulness. 
How faithful are you in daily prayer? Do you talk to the Lord every day? You talk to somebody every day, I know that. Do you talk to the Lord every day? Daily prayer. How about your faithfulness in Bible reading? Well, I skip every other day. Why do you do that? You're not supposed to skip every other day. You're supposed to read every day. If you need a Bible reading program, see me after service. I'll get you a Bible reading program. You must read the scriptures. You must get what's here in here. That's where you got to get it, in your head and in your heart. That's how you get changed. That's how you let the word of God mold you. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans. That's what's going on. So daily prayer, Bible reading. How often do you meditate? Are you faithful in meditation? Are you faithful in reflecting on what God has done for you? Do you take a little time out in your daily schedule to meditate and think about spiritual things? Your flesh will say, no, we don't do that. We don't want to do that. That takes some medita- that, that, that takes some discipline. Daily prayer, Bible reading, meditation, and reflection. Here's one. Now, I'm speaking to the choir right now. Church attendance. Are you faithful in church attendance? When the doors are open here, are you here? Are you you're here on a Thursday night? Lord willing, you'll be here on a Sunday morning. You need to be faithful. Do you know what that does to a pastor when people are faithful? You know what that does? That encourages an individual. That encourages him. That's a good thing. We're with you, pastor. We're with you. We're here with you. That's, that's a good thing. Church attendance. Okay, here's where some of you are going to jump off. Tithing and giving. Tithing and giving. Faithful people fulfill their commitments. I got mine automatic. They just automatic take it out of my investments every month. I, I don't even have to worry about it. I don't, I don't, we, don't, we don't have to worry about it. Tithing and giving. What's going on with, listen, listen, what's going on with your money is what's going on in your heart. You hear what I said? What's going on with your money is what's going on in your heart. Tithing and giving. Witnessing. Witnessing. How often do you witness? How often do you witness? I have an, I have a, an individual that, I'm, that I would love to go and speak with, but she don't want to speak with me right now because of her, because of her illness. Witnessing. Uh, here's number seven. How, are you faithful in loving the brethren, or are you faithful in talking about the brethren? Love the brethren. Love the brethren. Uh, in your work life, how faithful are you in your work life? Do you know people that just can't hold a job for some reason? Isn't that strange? Can't hold a job. Work life. Here's one. How, about, how faithful are you in your marriage? In your marriage. How faithful are you in regards to your children? How faithful are you in regards to your children? How faithful are you in searching for the truth? You see this? That's the truth. It's not a truth. It's not one in a series of truths. That is the truth. I checked it out. I checked it out. I have studied all the major religions of the world. I have studied all the literature. I haven't read it all, but I've studied all the literature of the world. Nothing comes close to this. Nothing comes close to this. This is the Word of God. And it is such of the Word of God that is God has granted us the Word of God in our own language, in the English language. You ever study that? Or do you just, listen, do you just believe it because Dr. Bredo says so? Don't do that. Don't do that. Look at all the material on our website that we have as far as why this Bible is the Word of God. It's the Word of God. So tonight, ask yourself this question. Are you faithful? Are you a faithful individual? Don't make an excuse for yourself. Just be honest and say, yes, I'm faithful in this area. I'm not faithful in that area. I'm faithful in this area. I'm not faithful in that area. Just be honest. Confess it to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to be faithful. That's what you need to do. So do you exhibit the characteristics we've talked about today? Where or in what areas are you deficient in? Today, tonight, why don't you recommit to being faithful to the Lord? Your life, listen, your life will have a meaning and a purpose that you never had before. When you, when you are committed to the things of the Lord, you'll have a meaning and a purpose in your life that you never had before. Don't you want the Lord to say to you when you see him face to face, well done, thou good and faithful servant. One more scripture verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're done. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 at verse 17. Paul says this, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, you can translate to your earthly life, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. They're temporary. They don't last. But the things which are not seen are eternal. That's what I hope you get out of this tonight. That your faithfulness, your faithfulness will be things that will be worth an eternal reward. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the faithfulness that you exhibited on the cross, the faithfulness that you exhibited in your three-year ministry. Lord, your book says that when it was time to go to Jerusalem, you did not flinch. You, uh, Lord, you, you went there knowing what was going to happen to you. You were faithful to us. You were faithful to the mission. You were faithful to your ministry. And Lord, from what we've learned tonight, may we, may I be faithful to you. May I be faithful to you. I pray you'd bless this church, bless our 10th anniversary, our services this Lord's, this Lord's Day. Uh, Lord, I'm so thankful for the church that you raised up here. I'm so proud to have been a part of it. I'm so blessed to my wife, for my wife and I to have been a part of it. We pray now that you would bless our time together. May we consider our a mission to be faithful individuals. We'll give you the honor, we'll give you the glory, and we'll be thankful. We pray, Lord, for your soon coming. May you break the skies. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Preacher? Amen. Great message. Um, I don't have much to say because I don't want to put a cup of cold water over it. So, But I, I will say... Uh, Joe, uh, remind me again, how many times have you read through your Bible now? He's on number 63 of reading through his Bible, and it shows, does it not? I wish he had had some cross-references tonight, but <laughs> it was. I say that to say, when Joe and I talk a lot about Faith Bible Church and planning Faith Bible Church, I remember specifically one conversation we had, and we looked at each other and said, you know, I don't have much. But we know this book. And I'm telling, and look what has happened on that. And so I say that to encourage you. Know this book, man. Know the word. Know the word. Know it intimately. Study it. Get to know it better. Be faithful in your Bible reading. And man, the rest is just going to flow out. You're going to be faithful in all the other things that he's mentioned. And so, and thank you guys for living what you preach and living that out in those uh, things to be faithful in. So anyway, I just want to encourage you with those words. So uh, let's have some fellowship time uh, tonight. Stick around, encourage one another, say hello to the Marcones, and uh, we'll have a great night. And see you Sunday and pray for our services. Thanks.